today I'm going to be focusing on just one thing that I'm growing in the garden, and that's tomatoes. And specifically what I wanted to talk about was what I'm doing in order to be able to grow tomatoes in shade or part sun, I guess depending on your definition. So conventionally the belief about tomatoes is that they require as much sun as you can possibly give them, and usually people say unless you have full sun of six or eight hours at least a day of full direct sun that it's not even really worth it to grow them. But you can actually grow tomatoes with a lot less sun than you might think. So as you can see, I've got all kinds of plants here, and because I even have my first ones that have started to ripen, I thought it would be a great time today to talk about what I've done in order to successfully grow tomatoes in the shade. And I'm going to go through the whole process of everything I've done to get my tomatoes growing, from selecting seed until harvest. Now when you're trying to grow tomatoes in general, but especially when you're trying to grow them without as much light as would be ideal, it's really important to be thoughtful about what kinds of plants will work well when you're doing your seed selection itself. So I'm growing four kinds of tomatoes in my garden currently, and these are the four varieties that I'm growing. If you look at the four packages that I have here, um, the one common denominator that you might notice between them is that they are all forms of cherry tomatoes. The reason that I decided to grow cherry tomatoes as opposed to larger tomatoes is because since they're so small, um, they require less growing time before they're able to ripen, and also cherry tomatoes tend to be more vigorous producers. So the four varieties that I have here, um, just to go through them quickly, so one, this one here is, is um, just from a farmer's market tomato that I had last year. I squished out some of the seeds onto a paper towel. You cut the tomato in half and you just kind of wipe the guts onto the paper towel. And then I germinated those this year. And so I'm not sure what the variety is, just that they were being sold as yellow organic cherry tomatoes. Um, and so that's one of the varieties I'm growing. The other yellow cherry tomato that I'm growing is Honeybee. It's a hybrid. And um, these were actually just given to me by a friend, so it wasn't an intention to acquire these seeds specifically. But again, just another cherry tomato, so, uh, so that's why I was growing that. Black cherry tomatoes are another one I'm growing. I lost the original package, so they're all inside this little seed. Um, these are a, a fairly common heirloom variety, so you can find more information about that just by looking them up, black cherry tomatoes. And then finally, the most unusual one that I'm growing are these ones that are called Red Robin. So they're supposed to be very, very tiny, like six to eight inches tall, and they are said to need less light than many other varieties of tomato need. Um, they're made for growing sort of indoors on your windowsill. So they don't need quite as much direct sun as usual, which is why I chose this variety specifically. So so aside from choosing cherry tomatoes, which I think is a wise way to go if, you're, if you have less light than is ideal, another thing that you want to look for, um, I think is suggested by the picture on this package, um, is looking for plants that are really vigorous, productive producers. So as you can see here, there's a high ratio on this plant of, um, of tomatoes to leaves. And the thought process, from my perspective anyway, on why, why it would be desirable to choose this when you're growing in a shadier location is that even if your output is diminished by virtue of the fact that you don't have as much light as you would, would ideally have, at least you're going to get a reasonable amount of output. So even if the, the output is reduced 50%, that's still a reasonably good yield compared to something that yields usually very moderate amounts and then you're, you're cutting that in half. So my two tips for choosing seeds are number one look for cherry tomatoes and number two look for things that are that are known to be um, vigorous productive types of, of plants. When you're choosing your seeds or your plant starts one thing that will come up is whether you want a determinate variety or an indeterminate variety of tomatoes and I've read conflicting things about which one is better for lower light conditions. Some people say that determinates because they put out a bunch at once that it um, will be more productive overall and you'll get more more per plant. I've also heard that with indeterminates that maybe you'll get more because they don't need so much energy at once because there's only a few tomatoes forming at any given time. So what I ultimately decided to do was do a mix of the two. So I've got a determinant here, that's the, the unknown mystery farmer's market yellow cherry tomato. I've got the black cherry tomato, which is an indeterminate. On the end, I've got the honeybee tomato which is a semi-determinant, so a mix of the two. And then the little red robin plants that I have are, of course, a tiny, tiny determinant. So I would advise, or at least what I'm doing, is just to try, try a mix of different types, and then ultimately, at the end of the year, I can see what works best and maybe try that type more so next year. 
So once you've selected your seeds, the next thing that you want to do is get them started indoors well, well, well before your frost date. You want to get them off to a racing start so that when you're ready to put them outside, they've already gotten as big as you can manage them being indoors. So I started my seeds this year eight weeks before the frost date, so a good two months before the frost date, and that enabled them to be really, really big by the time that I was putting them outdoors. So this is the little indoor grow area I have. I know it's really messy and covered in dirt right now. It's only got these two little plants because everything else is outside because it's the summer and time for putting things outside. Now I've done a previous video on the setup that I have here, but basically it's just an indoor um, full spectrum grow light. So you can have any kind of setup that you want, but you want to get your plants as big as, as you can handle them being indoors by the time that you put them outside. Because basically the principle with growing things is that energy in equals growth. And the more that you get your plants developed by the point that you're putting them outside, the less work they have to do when they are outside. So if you want to skip this whole step of, of, um, of starting things indoors, the other thing you can do, of course, is just to buy, to buy plant starts and um, go to your local nursery and choose something that's already quite big. But again, yeah, you want to choose something that's quite, that's quite big and well-developed already. If you're choosing a little tomato plant that's just like this, it's going to need a lot of, of input from the light to get big. So my recommendation is to choose, choose plant starts that are as big as possible or to grow them indoors yourself and make them as big as you can handle them being indoors before you put them outside. And just an additional note on starting your tomatoes indoors. So when you're growing something like tomatoes that require a great deal of light and you're growing it under a grow light that's not quite as good as, as the direct sun, they're going to have a tendency to get a little bit leggy. So this just means that the plant is going to be quite spindly and tall with, with sort of infrequent leaves. It's going to look like somebody pulled it up and stretched it out a little bit. Now in the case of some plants, this is a, a problem. The plant will die or fall over. With tomatoes, as I'm going to talk about next, it's not an issue at all. So even if your plants are getting leggy indoors, don't worry about it. Once you've either got your own seeds off to a good start or you've purchased transplants that are fairly large, the next thing to do when you're moving them outside is to think about what's the best place that you can put them in. So even if you're growing in part shade or shade, um, the best thing to do for your tomatoes is to give them as much sun as you have available. So I've identified that from my from my balcony, this corner, as you can see, where the, by judging by where the line of sun is, this area over here is getting more sunlight than stuff over here. And so my tomatoes I've put over in this area. Now I not only face north, which is not ideal for gardening purposes, but I also am on a balcony where my overhead sunlight is totally blocked by the other people above me. So I'm really limited in the amount of sun that I'm getting per day, and in this spot, these are getting about four to five hours um, per day of sun, of direct sun on a good, on a good non-cloudy day. The rest of the day, because it is completely um, open over this way, they're in, they're in quite bright indirect sun, but there's no direct sun except for about four hours in the evening when the sun is setting. But just find out for you in your specific location what areas are likely to get the most amount of sun that you can give them and choose that as the place that you want to put your tomatoes. Once you've chosen the location that you want to put your plants in, the next stage of course is going to be to plant them. And this, the process is really the same whether you're going to be putting your tomatoes into the ground directly or whether you're putting them in containers. But, but I have sort of two suggestions of what I've done that I think have contributed a great deal to the success of the plants that I'm growing. The first of these two methods is that I use a technique of burying the plant down very deeply and gradually building up the soil around it so that I have a really, really well-developed root system. So this is a clip from about seven weeks ago, and as you can see here, my plant was a little bit leggy at this point, but if you use this method, that will correct itself and not be any trouble at all. So the thing with tomatoes is that anywhere the central stem touches soil, it will develop additional roots, so you can bury it really deep and it will just develop a really strong, great root system. So what I've done here is chosen a five gallon deep bucket, but you can also just dig a hole in the ground that's quite deep. And you put the plant all the way down to the bottom and then you can add soil up to the level of the first leaves. And if you want to bury it deeper, all you do is just pinch off the leaves on the side and add additional soil. As the plant gets bigger and you want to bury the stem more, what you can do is just pull off the lower stems that are next to the soil currently. So you just pinch those off, and I'll do the same on one over here, and then you just get some more soil, and bury the stem to the depth that you want. So I've been doing this at a depth of about um, 
maybe an inch or two every every five to seven days, and you can bury it up to the depth of the next of the next stem. Um, actually, I'll probably remove this one too. But you can bury it to a depth that it's the main stem, and no additional suckers or side side branches. And the second planting technique that I've been using is that I'm growing using um, basically the single stem method of growing tomatoes. So again, you can find all kinds of uh, videos on YouTube about people who have done this and can give you a more extensive demonstration if you need it. But just to show you quickly, um, basically what I've done here is to remove the suckers on the tomato so that it has a single strong growing stem. So a sucker is um, this little piece here that if you've grown tomatoes, you should be well aware of what they are because they're kind of annoying when you're trying to um, to grow the tomato in the single stem method but basically there's your main trunk here and then there's a side branch that comes off and then at every joint there's this little piece that will try and develop and basically what you do is just pinch it off so here you can see an example of what happens when you miss a sucker so here I have the main stem of this tomato that I was attempting to make into a single stem tomato but I unfortunately I did not notice that this sucker this diagonal branch that you see over here had been developing and it's hard to see just because of the way things are set up but it's got its own tomatoes and stuff developing at the end now so the issue with letting suckers develop um, when you're growing in shade is just that it's going to take away energy from the main plant and because you already have a limited amount of energy input that's going into it from the light my philosophy anyway is that it's better to just do a single stem method and let that one plant devote as much energy as it can to developing the the fruit that are on its own stem. So with these red robin tomatoes, these are the tiny little ones that I'm growing, and this is as big as the plant gets. This is an example of an instance where I would not do the single stem method just because they're already made to be very small. So if you're doing something like these, um, a tiny tom, micro tom, all of these little tiny dwarf varieties, in those instances, don't bother with the single stem method. They're already going to be so small that, that you don't need to worry about it. But here you can see an example of kind of what happens when you don't do a single stem method. So in here, there's this main branch over here and then a second one over here. So basically that's just what will happen if you let your suckers develop, that your plant will just turn into a, a more bush-like shape that's gonna branch out. So then the final step, and also the step that is the most fun, is harvesting. So this is just my um, yellow cherry tomato that back when I was showing you the seeds, these are the ones that were in the unmarked white envelope with just the goopy seeds spread onto the paper towel. I don't know what these are, they're just yellow cherry tomatoes. And these ones have been doing really, really well. They're super prolific, and they're also the first ones that are ripening in my garden this year. So I've already harvested one yesterday. I'm gonna be harvesting some more in just a minute here. But um, I just wanted to give some quick advice about one thing you can do to reduce the strain on your plant while some of the tomatoes are trying to, har are trying to um, ripen. So often when you go to the grocery store, you can buy tomatoes that are just kind of on a stem like this. So it's just, it's clear that it's just been snipped off and then the tomatoes are left to ripen like that. And that's something that you can do yourself too. So once you notice that your tomatoes, like these ones over here, these are not all the way ripe, but they've started to ripen. Once they get to that stage where they're starting to ripen and they have, I guess what's called a blush of their final color. So on these ones yellow, but if you're growing a red tomato, um, it has to start getting some red on it. What you can do is just cut off um, either the individual tomato from the stem. So on these ones, I could just cut off this little one and leave a bit of the stem. Or if you wanted to do a whole cluster, you could just snip off the whole bit of the cluster. What you can do is then take it, take it and put it inside and then let them ripen on your counter. So the benefit of doing this is that it's reducing the amount of energy that's needing to go to those specific tomatoes. So if these ones are not in the picture, then your plant is going to be using all the light energy that it's getting to redistribute that to the other things that it's that are not ripened yet. So that's just one way that you can reduce some of the energy consumption that your plant needs, but it's not mandatory at all and it's something that I'm not doing right now just because I don't really have that many on here that are trying to ripen. So I've just picked one of those little yellow cherry tomatoes and I'm bringing it inside so that I can cut it up and show you how nice it's going to be inside even though it's been grown in the shade. Unfortunately, I kind of failed at doing an on-camera slicing action, but I will do a taste test for you. So I'm just going to put a little bit of salt because that's the best way to have them, and I'll give it a go. Mmm. So it's super flavorful. Mmm. That's really good. Yeah, it's super flavorful. 
um, a very juicy texture. Really, really nice. Perfectly ripe. So even though this was grown in the shade, it's no less delicious, and I have so many of them outside, I don't even know what I'll do with all of them. So even if you have a shady garden, I would still recommend giving growing tomatoes a shot, and if you use some of the methods I've talked about, hopefully you'll have success too.